All right, welcome everybody. Um, first, I'd like to thank Denny for his time today. If you have any questions, use the raised hand function uh, in the chat, or you can send a message in the chat and I will get to everyone as best as I can. Um, we can start with Casey Johnson when he's ready. Denny, thanks for doing this. Appreciate your time today. I'm curious what kind of contact, if any, you've had with the Bulls and your just your overall general thoughts on their roster if you were to land in Chicago? Uh, first of all, I think uh, Chicago is a good team, good young team with a lot of potential. Um, I haven't really um, – listen, if Chicago is interested, I'm, I'm down. I mean, I'm, I'm going to work um, as hard as I can, and I'm going to do the best as I can for the team to be successful and to win. So that's about it. Thank you. Rick Bunnell, when you're ready. Hey, Denny, how are you? Um, the Hornets have made it really clear that they need more skill at the wing positions. I was, I was curious how familiar you are with their situation and also if you've had any interaction with them yet. Uh, I didn't have interaction with them yet. Um, I don't really know uh, what their situation, but if if they're interested in a wing, or or a, or a or a player, or a, and they think I'm I'm the right guy, um, I will make sure that um I'm gonna play as best as I can and and help um to close the uh, and help to get what they need and what are they missing in their team, um to be a, a good team and a, and a good winning team. So, what positions? What positions uh, do you think you fit well in at the NBA level? Honestly, I can I can play one through four, um, but it's not about me. It's about what the team really needs, um, and what the team really and what the coach really want me to play. Uh, I'll play and I'll do the best I can. I, I have some noise. Some, yeah, if you, if you can, noise. any media, if you can mute your mic. Um, just while questions are asked, that'd be great. Uh, Kenny, if you're done answering or you can keep going. Hmm? Are you done with answering the question? Or we can move on to the next one. Yeah, I'll answer the question. Okay, great. Uh, Ferdinand Rivera, when you're ready. Hey, Danny from Puerto Rico. How do you feel hey. being compared to Luca Doncic, and have you communicated with the Warriors? How will you fit win with that team? Um, first of all, um, I think what Luca did um, and what he's done, doing right now is great. I think he's a great player. Um, we came from from the same uh, league, basically, and I and I and I understand why people see familiar, uh, familiar things. Um, I just want to make it clear that he's a great player and he has his own path and skills, and I have my own path and path and skills. And I have my own my own abilities, the goods and the bads. And, you know, I just want to be the best Danny Avdi I can be. And I just don't want to be compared to anybody. That's about it. Um, about the Warriors, uh, I didn't contact um, yet. But, um, listen, it's the NBA, and, I, and I'm excited for, for every team I'm going to talk to. Um, it's a dream come true, and, and I'll, be, I'll be down to, to play wherever. What teams have shown interest in you? I, I don't really know. I, I'm not focusing on that. I'm just focusing on working for now and get preparing for the next level, the next step of my um, my career. And, you know, each team who's going to draft me going to get the best of me. And and that's, that's about it. Thank you. Next question is from Alder Almo, when you're ready. Hi. Hi, Danny. Thanks for doing uh, it. Yeah. Have you talked to the Knicks and what do you think of the organization and the changes they've done in their uh, roster? I, I just want to make it clear for everybody. I didn't contact any team yet. Um, I mean, the Knicks, the Knicks um, are an NBA organization, uh, a good young NBA organization. Um, and I'm, again, I'm saying... I don't really um, mind to join any team. I'm I'm super excited to to take my uh, game to the next level, and I'm gonna work 
um, the hardest I can in any team. So um, that's about it. You're welcome. Next up is Alan Guillaume. Hello, Denis. Uh, was able to, to see you last summer uh, at the U20 playing against, against friends. I just wanted to, to ask you, you played FIBA, you played Euro League, you played domestic league even uh, this summer 2020 uh, with different roles in each of those uh, teams. How those uh, experiences can help you in your transition to the NBA, you think? I think uh, those situations were great for me. I think uh, I played with a lot of ex-NBA guys, a lot of very experienced players uh, who've been in the NBA, who've been all around Europe. I mean, the EuroLeague is the second best league in the world. Um, I was, I, I was um, I, I'm glad I had the opportunity to play um, in this level and to, to have um, experience. Um, let's not forget, um, all of those, all of those teams, we did, we did really good. So, to this year, uh, we were top top eight of the Euro League. Uh, of course, with Israel, we won back to back gold medal under twenty. And I I I I, I had the opportunity to play in the biggest um, stages um, before before the NBA. So I think it, it it's really um it's really an advantage for me. Yeah, thank you very much. It was a good You're seeing welcome. you there. Uh, next, next up, when you're ready, Heiter Fassini. Hi, Tor, are you there? Uh, hi, hi. Hi, Danny. Hey. Uh, which current NBA player do you use as inspiration to develop your game? And which NBA player from the past do you use as inspiration? Um, first of all, and generally, I like to watch the NBA. Um, I don't look at any specific player that inspires me. I just look, I just love to see the game and, and the situations the player goes on and to see what they do good and what they do bad and what I can learn from this. And that, that's basically um, um, what I'm looking at when I'm, when I'm in the NBA. But um, I don't have any special inspiration player I look on. Uh, again, I just, I just, Wanna wanna have my uh, my like my special game and my special abilities of my own, and I'm just learning learning from the NBA in general, but not not from a specific player. Thanks. You Next up, Tom Orsborn. When you're ready. Danny, I I cover the Spurs, and I'm wondering, you know, as an international player, what what is your mindset about what they've done with so many guys from so many different countries? And the role that Greg Popovich and R.C. Buford have had in making the NBA a more international game. I, I think I think it's great. I think it's great that uh, the NBA gives opportunities to um, to um, all over the world players coming in, and 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 it's really beautiful to see um, a lot of guys in a lot of different countries have a basketball mentality and basketball skill wise. Everybody has their own skill set. And I think it's, it's very important um, to have uh, NBA as a global game, um, to have different kind of players. Um, but yeah, they're a great organization um, who did a lot of great things with overseas players. And I mean, I mean that's, that's about it. I mean, yeah, they're a great organization. Have you heard from them yet? I don't hear it. What did you say again? Have you heard from anyone with the Spurs yet? Have they interviewed you? No, they didn't hear from me yet. How about defensively? Where where do you think you are right now as a as a defender? As a defender, yes. uh, I I think I think I made a big improvements on my def defensive skills. Um, I'm I'm way far from being perfect, and and that's what I like about it. I like to learn every 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 day something new and improve every day, and. I think uh, um, I'm going to work as hard as I can to make um, my game as good as, as, as anybody in the NBA. So um, I'm excited. I'm humble. I'm, I'm ready to work. And I would just like to see myself improving. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If we could try to limit to one question. Ready to work. And I would just like to see myself improving. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. If we could try to limit to one question, uh, that would be great. Uh, but advice that you've gotten from guys like Omri Caspi and Amari Stoudemire, um, what sort of advice have they given you to make your dreams in the NBA a reality? I mean, um, they give me a lot of advices, but I'm a, I'm a player who asks a lot of questions. So some, sometimes after games, they will um, they will like say, "Oh, Danny, uh, uh, like just too many questions." But I mean, they really, really, really uh, respect me and, and give me all the answers all the time. And I'm very, very I'm very interested of what what was there, and I was very curious. So I asked a lot of questions and. And for me to have those uh, those players who who played a, who played a great career in the NBA uh, have my back and and say uh, say the things they have um, they have gone through t in the NBA helped me a lot to understand what's 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 going on, and I think it, it was a big it was a big advantage of me and it's a lot to understand what's 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 going on, and I think it, it was a big it was a big advantage of me and it um, and it was, it was great great time spending with them. Thanks, Phil. Danny, I just want to ask you, uh, what, is it, what does it feel like to, be, to, be, to possibly become the, uh, the highest drafted Jewish player in history? I mean, it's, 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 um, it's, ex it's exciting. I mean, uh, every, every time that you can make uh, like history or, or, any kind of, or, or any kind of good thing to represent the Jewish community in the state of Israel, I mean, that, that's an honor for me. Um, I have my uh, my Jewish community in Israel uh, get, uh, got my back, and I'm just trying to I'm I'm just gonna try to um, do the best I can to make everybody um, um, proud, and I mean that's exciting. Christos Saltos, when you're ready. Hello, Denny. Hello. Congratulations about your uh, your uh, your career with uh, Maccabi in your next step uh, on NBA. You co you collaborate with uh, Coach Feroglos, Yanis Feroglos. Yes. How helped yes. you to involve your game, and what advice uh, give you about uh, your next step? And also, uh, how imagine yourself on NBA from five or ten years from now? Uh, first of all, Coach Feroglos helped me a lot. Um, at the beginning, I didn't have quite, um, I didn't play a lot, but he always pushed me and always tried to, uh, and he always believed in me um, uh, to, to be a good player and, and a good, and a good, um, and a good fit for the team. So he was always positive about me. He always pushed me in practices and games. He, he tried to give me, he, he tried to give me the right stage to do it. And I, I'm really glad I had that coach around me who gave me this confidence. And, and, and a lot of things I did is because of him. Um, yeah, so I really, really enjoyed the, the whole the whole coaching staff in Maccabi this year was, was great. Um, I'm really going to miss him. But um, about like five, ten years from now, I hope I'm going to be the best Danny Avdi I can be. Uh, I'm, I hope I'm going to max my potential and be a good NBA player. François, Damien Philippe, when you're ready. Yeah, thank you. And thank you, Danny, for taking the time to, to talk to us. Of course, of course. Um, you or your uh, public relations team just posted on Instagram that you love to watch uh, your games as soon as you get home. Um, talking about that, what, are you, what do you think are the biggest improvements you can do um, on your game um, arriving at the next level in the NBA? Um... Sorry, that was my end. No worries. Oh, that's good. That's good. Um, first of all, I love to watch film. I think I'm learning a lot from film and I, I always watching my games. I, I'm making sure that, um, um, one of, one of the coaches cuts, cuts videos for me and, and let, let me see those, let, let me see those mistakes. Um, I mean, I have a lot of things to improve and that, that's what I like about, um, playing basketball and about myself. I like to see myself improving. I like to see uh, I like to see myself not doing uh, all the time great things because um, I can improve them and I can be better in them and I have and I have time and, and the progress to improve. Um, I'm working very I'm working very hard and progress to improve. Um, I'm working very I'm working very hard 
and I'm trying to I'm trying to improve every every aspect of my game because I'm yeah so I'm I'm basically really like to work uh, on about any any aspect of the game and, and that's what I do that's what I do I work hard and I hope to see me, myself improving. Thank you, Danny, and good luck. Thank you. Next up, uh, Dwayne Rankin, when you're ready. Thank you. Appreciate that. I just wanted just to ask, um, as far as, you know, A, coming into the league, what do you feel like there's things you can bring to an NBA team right away? Um, first of all, I'm going to bring what, what the team needs and, and wants me to bring. Um, bring energy. Um, I think I'm a very positive person. Um, I think I'm, 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 a, I'm, a, I'm a good teammate. And other than that, all the things around, that's going to come through the years, through the years and what, what the coach want me to do. But our, like the, the, the major things that I can bring is, 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 is good chemistry, um, um, good chemistry, um, to have a good vibe around the team and, and whatever comes after, comes after. Has Amari told you anything? What, what has Amari told you about the Suns? Has he given you any words? Has he talked to talk with you about them at all? I, I can you repeat that question? I didn't hear you quite good. I was saying, did has Amari talked with you about the Phoenix Suns? Has he given you any kind of insight? Because obviously he was a a, a major star there. Uh, has, has have you guys even talked Suns and your thoughts on the Suns? No, Amari didn't didn't talk about specific teams. He just talked his experience um, through the NBA. Okay. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Rob Schaefer, when you're ready. Hey, Denny. Um, thanks for giving us your time. Uh, we appreciate it. Um, I, I'm curious, uh, in, in terms of your development and, and the growth of your game, um, how has playing at a club like Maccabi, obviously world-class in terms of expectations and, and talent, um, and being in a professional league and everything along those lines, how, how have all those things um, impacted your development as you've kind of sought to to carve out your role um, within that context? Um, I think it's very, it, it, de it developed me very much. I think I played with um, grown men who had, um, some of them had an, a, a good NBA career. They played uh, in a lot of places. They experienced it, a lot of things. And I think at the beginning, uh, they had a lot of expectations. You know, we have we have a very uh, ex like we have a, a, a lot of expectations around our team. Um, and at the beginning, as a young guy, it was kind of pressure, a lot of pressure. But as the time progressed, uh, that pressure became a good thing. It, it helped me uh, go into hard situations um, that can uh, I can meet um, in the future. And I think it's a great, great um, advantage and a great thing. It happened to me. I'm very, I'm very glad I was in that situation in, in this specific team. And, and for people unfamiliar with your game, you've talked about what you can bring from a chemistry standpoint. On the floor, what are kind of the strengths of your game, the things that you feel um, comfortable doing and things that you need to work on maybe too as you jump to the NBA level? I, I don't really, really like to talk about um, my game. It's just just me. I don't really like like to talk about my game. Um, I'm tr just trying to do what's best for the team in that specific moment, and just try to of your game, the things that you uh, I can meet um, in the future. And I think it's a great, great um, advantage and a great thing. It happened to me. I'm very I'm very glad I was in that situation in in this specific team. And for people unfamiliar with your game, you've talked about what you can bring from a chemistry standpoint. On the floor, what are kind of the strengths of your game, the things that you feel um, comfortable doing and things that you need to work on maybe too as you jump to the NBA level? I don't really really like to talk about um, my game. It's just just me. I don't really like, like to talk about my game. Um, I'm tr just trying to do what's best for the team in that specific moment and just try to win. At the end of the game, I like to win. I love to win. It's really hard for me to lose. And I'm going to do whatever I can. I'll give them 100% every night to win. And I mean, I mean, that's about it. I mean, I need to work on a lot of things and improve a lot of things. And, and, and I'm doing it and I'm working very hard. But um, I don't really like to talk about my game. Gotcha. Well, thank you and uh, best of luck with everything. Thank you.
Next question is from Jeff Garcia. Hello, Denny. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Uh, there's a photo of you floating out there on the internet uh, when you were at the Basketball Without Borders program and you had a chance to meet Spurs' Greg Popovich. If you can remember that far back, how was that meeting and what was it like to meet a guy who's helping pioneer foreign players come to the NBA? Um, I think that's, that's the first NBA coach I, I've seen in person. Um, I remember it was like three years ago, four years ago. It was the first time I, I, I was on that, on that kind of stage. So it was kind of exciting for me. I mean, Greg Popovich, is, he's a great coach. He's been many years in the NBA. And, yeah, that, that photo still sits there, and I look at it, some, look at it sometimes, getting some memories. So that, that's, that's cool. That, that's a cool picture. Hopefully Phil doesn't buy my head off, but uh, can you imagine playing for uh, Popovich and that, that team? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's first a great organization. I mean, wherever I go, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful and I'm blessed. But, uh, yeah, it will be funny for sure. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Your own Weitzman, when you're ready. Hey, Danny. Um, you shot much better when you came back, at least the beginning, when, from three, when you came back after the break. I was curious if there was anything specific you switched in your shot or changed that led to that. Uh, I want to talk about my shot. Um, I think a lot of guys who are not in the team, who are not in basketball, don't understand some things about the shot. The shot is not always about your technique. I think my technique is, is, is good. Um, I just think that people don't see the surroundings. So people forget that I was, I was, I was young. I was going through uh, a team with a lot of experience, with a lot of pressure with a lot of fans every night. Um, I played several kind of minutes, sometimes less, sometimes more, sometimes it's more pressure. So it, it was it was kind of a, it was kind of ups and downs in the shot. And it, it, it also refers to what's going on around. But I think towards the end I felt very comfortable in the team. And that's that's the main reason why I think I shot better. I think I I think my confidence raised and I felt better and the guys made me feel better. Um, I think my technique I can I can shoot. I'm a great shooter. I don't think about um, the the same shot. I always think about the next shot. And I mean, if I couldn't shoot, I won't shoot threes. But as long as I shoot, I'm I'm confident and I'm trying to make every shot I can. Thanks, Danny. You're welcome. Next up, and pardon my pronunciation, uh, Demetrius Epifoulos, when you're ready. Demetrius, you there? Hello. Uh, Denny, hello. I came from Hi. Greece. Uh, tell me something. It was difficult to make Coach Feropoulos trust you in order to give you the opportunity to grow as a player uh, at such a young age. I mean... It wasn't hard, but it t it took some time because um, a Maccabi is a, is a is a winning club. They like to win, and and maybe maybe one year ago uh, I wasn't that ready to play that level. But Spur Coach Propos make made sure that I was pro get progressing, and he he slowly he slowly got me in in there in that level I need to play in. And and as soon as I and as soon as I proved them that I can play in this level, he believed in me. He believed in me from the beginning. But I mean, for 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 a young guy like me to go on on that level wasn't that easy to fit me in the beginning. But he did. He did, I think he did a great job of of of, of trusting me and 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 doing it slowly and progress. Tell me about uh, Vasilis Garagiotelis and uh, Tyler Dorsey. Your relationship with uh, these two guys. Um, my relationship with those two guys were great. Uh, first of all, me and Vasilis uh, were very close. Uh, he, he used to help me a lot with my game. Uh, we were saying hello all the time. We were hugging all the time. We had great, great relationship between us. Um, I'm very good friends with his kids. So also, uh, so also it's cool. And I mean, Tyler is a great, great player. We had also a good relationship on and off the court. We had good chemistry together. And, you know, he was in the NBA, too. I asked him a lot of questions uh, on the NBA. And that's, that's, about, that's about it. I mean, we had a great relationship with all, all the team this year. Danny, thank you very much. 
You're welcome. Keelan Olson, when you're ready. Hey, Denny. Uh, Dragon Bender had a very similar path to you, starting at Maccabi and then becoming a top five pick in the NBA. Uh, hopefully the same for you, of course. Uh, have you had any conversations with him? And uh, if, if you have or if you haven't, just what you can take away from a guy who only a couple of years ago uh, went from Maccabi to a top five, top ten pick? I didn't have any conversation with him yet. Um, we had the same coach, coach does Veliko Perovic. Um, he used to coach us from a young age. Um, I mean, Bender is a great player. I think that he joined Maccabi this great, great for Maccabi. And I think he's going to do a lot of good things. I just wish him the best, uh, uh, the best for his, uh, rest of his career. And that's about it. Evan, Evan Demerel, when you're ready. Hey, Danny, thanks for your time. You're welcome. Um, it, let's say the Cleveland Cavaliers selected you with the fifth pick of the draft. How do you feel you would fit with their roster in terms of their young players and some of the veterans they have in tow? I mean, uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers is a, is a good, very good organization, very, uh, a lot of young, good players in that roster. Um, I, I'm, again, I'm saying I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to adjust myself to any situation, to any uh, organization that's going to choose me and believe in me. I'm going to give all I got. So, um, yeah. Perfect. Thanks. You're welcome. Okay, the last handful. Uh, Richard Harris, when you're ready. Richard, are you there? I'm here. I'm sorry. I was just unmuting. Hey, oh, Danny. You got the mic on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? Um, so, uh, a lot of people have asked questions I was already going to ask. And one thing I would like to comment on is uh, I think of all the prospects in this class, uh, your, div your diversity and versatility is impressive. It, there's, there's nothing that, to me that you can't really do on the court. Um, having said that, the one curiosity I have, and I didn't intend to ask this, but like I said, everybody else stole my questions, is um, your three-point shooting percentage often doesn't match your foul shooting percentage. And as you mentioned, your shot, you know, looks clean. It looks, it looks pure. Is there any, do you have any idea why you don't, you know, break that 70% mark or maybe even a little higher that would match up with your three-point percentage? Uh, you truly, you truly saying some, some, some true stuff some true things. Um, I think it's, it's a matter of time. And I think it's a matter of, of, of the head. I think, I think, um, I think I can shoot even, uh, um, above 70%. Right. Um, I'm going to get there. Okay. I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. And, and, and if, if it, if it's going to take me, uh, to stay until 12 at night after practice to make a 3000 to, to get above that 70%, I'll do that. And I think I improved my three throws after the Corona too. And I'm, I'm going to be humble and keep doing that until I get my goals. All right. Thank you. For, thank you very much. And good luck. Thank you. You're welcome. Next question is from Chris Fedor. Hey, Danny, thanks for doing this, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, you've mentioned the conversations that you've had with a lot of the former NBA guys that you've played with. I'm, I'm curious what specifically they have said to you about how different the NBA is versus the Euro League. Um, they said a lot of a lot of uh, faster pace, maybe um, wider spacing. M mostly those things. Uh, they talked about like fast pace and, and wider spacing. Um, a lot of traveling. Um, you know, the, the basic stuff, I mean, not, I, I don't remember everything, but because I asked a lot of questions, but those are the main things they, 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 they talked about. Thank you. You're welcome. Moving on. And again, uh, apologies for pronunciation, but Yas Kang, when you're ready. Hey, Denny, uh, looking forward to seeing you in the league next year. Uh, from a Warriors perspective, you're in a bit of a of a different mold, I would say, than some of the other teams with high picks and the fact that they're a championship contender. How would you think you would fit in with a, with a roster like Steph Curry and, and Clay Thompson, Draymond Green there in, in the Bay Area? 
I think um, this team is a great team with a lot of great guys, a lot of good all-star players um, who I can learn from. Um, I think it's a great experience. I mean, I'm excited wherever I go um, to be a championship contender. That that's I mean, that's a great uh, opportunity and, and, and great um, situation. But uh, for me, I just want to be uh, to develop myself to be at the best possible place for me. Uh, and that's that's about it. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Juan Estevez, when you're ready. Hey, hey, Danny. I just wanted, I'm curious, uh, the finals are about to start today, tonight. Uh, do you have any favorite for the series and how do you see it uh, playing out? I mean, it, it's going to be interesting to see. There's a lot of a lot of good matchups between there. I mean, LeBron heading to his... Uh, uh, to another final and and we'll see how it goes i mean i mean they're, they're good matchup teams they're they're very good competitors both teams very uh good coaches with both teams so i'm i'm, I'm curious to see what's gonna happen i don't, I don't know we'll, we'll see what's what, what gonna happen thank you you're welcome then he's been very generous with his time so just a couple of more uh ian bagley when you're ready Danny, thank you for doing this. I know a couple of people had asked about your uh, NBA teammates over there, just specific to Amari. Do you remember one thing that you asked him that you feel like you, you're going to be able to use in the NBA, and what was he like as a teammate? Um, let me think about um, one question I asked. Um, I asked Amari about I think I asked him how is it to play with Steve Nash, because um, because you have a you have a Hall of Fame point guard around you and, and like all his passes and stuff like, uh, and he, he said it was great. I think he said it's, it wasn't was one of his best point guard he played with, and Amari as a teammate was great, great man. Uh, have a lot of patience to young guys. Really wants the young guys to improve. I was with great relationship with him. He's a good friend, great friend of mine. Um, I learned from him a lot this season. I, I'm glad that he came to Maccabi and I'm glad I had the opportunity to learn from him. Thank you. You're welcome. Lillian Bordron, when you're ready. Hi, Denny. Hi. Hi. We have seen you post a lot of video of your workouts on social media. So what's that part of the process about NBA teams and uh, what is your relationship with uh, social media? My relationship with social media. Uh, I'm not a big social, uh, I'm not a big social media. I think I only have Instagram and Facebook. Um, I try to use the Instagram to post some basketball sometimes or some pictures for my friends, you know, but I don't really spend a lot a lot of time on instagram you know i just i just give people some taste of of me working or or my my lifestyle sometimes um i mean i'm i'm just excited just excited to 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 have this journey and and i want to share it with my friends uh for him to be with me in that path so that's about it thank you just two more uh sam smith when you're ready Thanks. Uh, someone er uh, earlier mentioned the comparison, of course, Luka Doncic, Doncic but um, in the NBA now, it's, it's common for uh, non-traditional point guard players. Uh, we've seen in the playoffs, Donovan Mitchell, Jamal Murray, of course, um, being able to run offense through and uh, essentially uh, be the facilitator. Is, is that the kind of player you are? I'm gonna be ready to play that role if 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 the team needs me to do that and the coach wants me to do that. I'll, I'll be ready and I, and I'll work the best I can to be to be a to be a, a great facilitator. Um, but again, I, I don't decide that. Uh, I'm just there to help the team win and 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 to um, to have to to win. You know, at the end of the game, in the end of the day, you need to do your part as best as you, best as you can and have the team win and be good on the court. Thanks. Last question, Mike Vorkanov, when you're ready. Hi, Denny. Um, I just had a question for you. I know you said you don't like to talk about your game, but I'm just wondering, um, which players do you like to watch uh, film or highlights of uh, to try to get a feel for them? And 
How, how would you like to emulate them on the court eventually in the NBA? I, I like um, to watch highlights, um, but it's not, it doesn't it doesn't mean that I, I want to add those things to my game because I'm not that type of player. I mean, sometimes I'll say I'll see a center. Sometimes I'll see a center highlights uh, who who is not like in my type of game. So I won't base I won't like try to add it to my game. I just enjoy watching it. Enjoy how to, to see how he reads the game. Um, but I, I like to watch a lot of guys. I mean, I mean from all the Europeans in the NBA to see how they fit and how they fit the European style in in, in the NBA. That's that's basically what a what I like to see. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Denny, for your time. You're very generous with it today. Um, Thank you, guys. I had fun. Thanks, everyone, for joining, uh, and enjoy the rest of your day.